Hi guys, we are back with The Walking Dead. We're on to episode 4 of season 1. So we left the last episode with Rick. See if I can start to get the names here. I'm, I'm trying desperately to learn as many names as quickly as possible with this series. We've got Rick, T-Dog, Darrell and Glenn heading back into Atlanta to go and try and find Merle. Except when they get to the rooftop... It appears as though he's managed to escape by cutting his hand off and we don't know where he is. They've parked the van a fair distance away, which I don't blame them. Um, I don't know what they do now. I don't know whether they try and locate him or they go and take care of everything else. Like the, the uh, bag of guns and everything with the radio. Can they really hang around for too long trying to trace... Bill's footsteps and where he's gone if he's still alive which I'm presuming he is but at the same time if you've cut your hand off there's a very good chance you're either bleeding out or he has I mean he looks as always the kind of guy who can take care of himself and is used to being you know getting injuries and stuff the, the, the more they're not city folk are they him and, and Dow maybe he's gone to try and patch himself up or something or look for supplies or something I've no idea but I don't know whether they should stick around for that now that who they've come back for is gone. Meanwhile, back at our survivors camp, I don't know his name, the abusive husband, but he's just got his ass handed to him by Dell, and I don't blame him. Hopefully, hopefully he will not attempt to do that again because you're not in society anymore, you can't do that, another man sees you beat on your wife, he's almost going to beat you to death, there's no cops just going to come away and just arrest you for it, you know, and, you, and no harm come to you. you, you are back in the wild, you're back in the jungle here, and you, you can't behave that way, and he just found out in a very violent way, <laughs> shall we say, and we also get from Rick's wife that she is blaming Dale for everything that happened between her and him because she, apparently he's the one who told her that Rick was dead and she took that as the reason why he wanted to get with her. I, pff, that's a complicated triangle. I don't know if it's going to resolve itself anytime soon. I guess it's not going to. Right. So we go see where they are in Atlanta, what's going to happen next, and who the hell is going to survive this. I like that they've took Daryl, because he's good with the crossbow. Rick, for obvious reasons. T-Dog just wants to go because he feels responsible. But Glenn is young, but seems to, you know, he said himself, I would rather you have along because you know what you're doing. You're not, you're not stupid. You, you're level-headed. You, you think ahead. Um, which is unusual for someone his age. I don't know. Maybe he plays Dawn of the Dead or what. <laughs> I don't know. Right, let's carry on. This is episode four. Ah, I get this. But he was always so adamant. I mean, you know Dad on the fishing thing. Do you think? He's taught you both I only spent my entire childhood with my ass in a boat. And the minute you went off to college, it was my ass in that boat, and he taught me dry lures from day one. This was not behavior developed over time. He adjusted. Knew. For you. you needed to catch the fish, and I needed to throw them back. He knew his daughter as well, clearly. What the fuck are you doing? Why are you digging grace? Kind of feels that way. I won't hesitate. I don't care if every walker in the city hears it. Yeah, got a do-rag or something? Wow, I've not had that in years, a do-rag. <laughs> My granddad used to call them do-rags. Really? Well, you in here? That's a bit peculiar, no one's dead. You haven't lost anybody. Yeah. You okay? Oh. <laughs> Lovely. One-handed. Well, yeah, it's easy to oh, have hands in his back. I've never met my brother. Feed him a hammer and crap out nails. My children will eat tonight. 
Thank you. Thank Dale. It's his canoe and gear. Hey, Dale. When's the last time you oiled those line reels? They are a disgrace. Oh, yeah. he's Dale. What for they calling the other guy? I don't alarm anyone. What? We may have a bit of a problem. You can't get far with that injury. We could help you check a few blocks around, but only if we keep a level head. In the China, Jim, what? Doesn't matter. I'm not hurting anyone. Yeah, except maybe yourself. It's it's a hundred degrees today. You can't keep this on. <laughs> sure, I can. Watch me. We think that you need to take a break. Okay. But why don't you go get yourself some shade, some food? Maybe I tell you what. Maybe a little bit. I'll come out here. I I'll help you myself. Then you're gonna beat my face in like Ed Peltier, aren't you? Ed, right, okay. Y'all seen his face, huh? What's left of it? Wrong, I'm sorry, he's wrong there. Yes, that's his business and his marriage and it's nothing to do with you about his marriage. But if he's someone who's beating his wife, that is hell your business. Stop it! Right. Jim, just stop it! Hey, 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 he's, hey, hey! He's hey. acting Jim, obedient. Jim, nobody's gonna hurt you, you Weird. hear me? Shh. If we go up there in a group, we're slow, drawing attention. If I'm alone, I can move fast. Here's the alley I dragged you into when we first met. That's where Daryl and I will go. Well, I mean, right. Your crossbow is quieter than his gun. It is. I may not be able to come back the same way. Walkers might cut me off. If that happens, I won't go back to Daryl. I'll go forward instead. All the way around to that alley where you guys are. Maybe. Uh, the fact that he delivered pieces, he's used to using roots, changing roots, spotting. He's resourceful. The makeup is so good. Who the hell are you? No, that's not a zombie. Whoa, don't shoot me! Yeah, he's heading your way. He got caught off. Uh, they've took Glenn, they've took the guns. Oh no, the guns are there. Guns are there. I don't think so. Where's your buddies going? Oh man, what a mess. So there are other people in the in that that area. And pour some on my head? Yeah. How long are you gonna keep me like this? Well, yeah. I don't think you're a danger yourself. Or others. You had sunstroke. Nobody's blaming you. You're not scared now, are you? No, sir. For the risk. They took Glenn. Could have taken Merle too. Merle? They did take him. What kind of hick name is that? What name my dog, Merle? Got to kick him. The men you were with took our friend. All we want to do is talk to them, see if we can work something out. Which is kind of dumb. <laughs> Why would you stay in the sea? You okay, uh, little man? I'm gonna cut off my feet, Cardinal. We were hoping more for a calm discussion. That hillbilly jumps Felipe's little cousin. Beats on him, threatens to cut off his feet. Felipe gets an arrow in the ass and... You want a calm discussion? But you're the ones who are attacked. I have one of yours. You have one of mine. Tried. Sounds like an even trade. Don't sound even to me. It's my bag of guns. The bag was in the street. Anybody could come around and say it was theirs. I don't like this. Or not. <laughs> come on, man. Make the trade. Please. I see two options. You come back with Miguel and my bag of guns, everybody walks. Or you come back locked and loaded. You see which side spills more blood. The question is, do you trust that man's word? No. The question is, what you willing to bet on? I didn't say that. I see my guns, but they're not all in the bag. That's because they're not yours. I thought I mentioned that. I'm going to chop up your boy. I'm going to feed him to my dogs. Three of the evilest, nastiest, man-eating bitches you ever saw. No. Oh, I don't like this. Felipe, he, he needs his alma staff. Carlito didn't find it. What? He says medicine. Don't well, this was not expected. Yeah. Felipe is a good boy. He had his trouble, but he pulled himself together. Helping us find a missing person. <laughs> a fellow named Glenn. The Asian boy? He's with Mr. Gilbert. You do as you don't. <laughs> <laughs> just all that macho just f flies out the window and they're like, yes, Grandma. <laughs> this looks like it's an old folks' home. 
are those the uh, man-eating dogs from hell that you picked up from a yard sale? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just brilliant. So, let me get this right. They've stayed in the sea here because they're taking care of an old folks' home that I presume had just got left to it. And it's obviously maybe um, somewhere they, they, they've got all sealed up and can, can maybe protect. And obviously there's at least one or two of them here. We heard him call her grandma. There's probably at least one or two of them here, if not more, that have got relatives here and they're still taking care of them. <sighs> all they're trying to do is protect their own. They're, they're just doing the same thing, but they've got to put on the hard front, which was exactly that. A front. That blood will be on my hands. Mine yeah. too. Thanks We'd for have that. walked back. Wouldn't be the first time we've had to. Protect Another one would be dead. Medicine. What's left of it? These people, the old ones, the staff took off, just left from here to die. Of course they did. Wow. The people we've encountered since things fell apart, the worst guy. Yeah. Plunderers. Right, with one thing. Yeah, the world's changed, and he says, no, it hasn't. The world's exactly as it was. It's no, I, I get his context. The world's exactly as it always was as regards those who have the muscle, those who have the power, those who have the guns, those that have the the men and the muscle are the ones who, who make the decisions. They're the ones who decide who lives and who dies. They're the ones who decide what they take and what they don't want and who they discard. The only difference in the society is those men aren't armed with guns on the street. They're in suits in high-rise blocks in the, in the city making billions of dollars. That's the only difference. So we barred all the windows, welded all the doors shut, except for one entrance. Better barricade. to go out, scavenge what they can to keep us going. You know what? Yeah. Leave them some. Not all. Give them a share, I would. I only came back to Atlanta for the hat. Don't tell anybody. You've given away half our guns and ammo. Guys, half. Not nearly half. Oh, my God. Where the hell's our van? We left it right there. Who would take it? Merle. No! You don't give a gift unwrapped. Deep breath. Sister's birthday, I remember. I'm sure I'll find something here. I just want to make sure there's no, uh, you know, there's no hard feelings. There's not. I do understand. Okay. <laughs> he doesn't seem a bad guy, to be honest. Why don't you come outside with everybody? Hell with him. Wow, too. look at that. Wouldn't piss on him if the heads was on fire. I gotta ask what's wrong with my watch. I see you every day. Same time, winding that thing. That you may remember time, but that you may forget it. Mm. <laughs> For a moment. If now the world's gone to shit, you and need to document the time. of your breath trying to conquer it. Thought I told y'all to leave me the hell alone, didn't I? No. what I say? Oh, shit, it is. Oh, yeah, kill him. Kill him if you're going to go and right kill him. Paper? Oh, hell, they've made the way to come. Oh, she's done. She's done. This is what he was afraid of. He said this would happen. Oh, it's gone to shit. It's gone to shit. No, 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 him. Oh, for the fuck's sake. I didn't even know the poor girl's name. She's already dead. Oh, we are losing people. Come on, y'all. Watch your way up here. I'll make the way to win a bag of Go, 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 go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god, my heart rate and my fucking blood pressure's gone up. <laughs> Do you know what the worst part is? The fact she's not dead and she's bleeding out. You're gonna have to kill her. And then you're gonna have to kill her, eh? Why I dug the holes? You gotta be kidding me. You knew this was gonna happen. Wow. That was emotional. <sighs> okay, just time to compose my thoughts for a minute there that was i've been excited for the first three episodes that's ended on quite a somber note uh, 
do you know what? I'm going to have to look it up, but I didn't even know that girl's name. Was it, was it Sophie or was that the little girl? I, I don't know. But th- this is the, this is the problem with a, uh, an apocalyptic show of any type. You just learn someone's name and they kill them off. <laughs> so he was right about warning him not, Rick, not to leave that they need as much muscle as possible. It was going to happen at some point. It just, the timing was just impeccably unfortunate that it was, they were sat there having dinner, eating fish, talking stories, and then the next minute it all goes to shit and had Rick and everyone turned up literally just a few minutes earlier, they would have probably been a little bit more prepared. I don't give a shit that Ed's dead. Ed is dead. (laughs) Um... Especially as what they were already started to hint with there with his daughter as well. Uh, so I'm glad they've, they've put an end to that straight away. I know his wife's probably going to be upset, but probably not for too long. Let's face it. His, his wife's name's Carol, right? I, I know that now. I heard it once. Um, so we don't know the whereabouts of Mel. And they've come running back to camp because their truck was gone automatically assuming that that's where Merle's going to have headed back with a major rampage and, and hellfire raining down on him when he gets back to camp because he's looking for this Rick guy who left him for dead there and T-Dog. But he's not made it back here. But instead, they've got here sort of in the nick of time for it not to be completely... the wipe, the, the camp to be complete wiped out. So his, his, daughter's, his son's all right, his wife's all right. Um, but she's lost her sister. Like I said, the worst of it is as she's dying there now, she's going to have to put her down again and she's probably going to want to do it. I, I would. If it, if it was somebody from my family or somebody related to me, I'd be like, look, let me do it before they get back up. Cool. And that group that we found with the old folks home, Totally not what I expected. I like that the, 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 it's not all, well, I mean, it is all doom and gloom. It's apocalyptic, it's supposed to be. But there has to be some light-hearted moments in it. You have to have some sort of balance. <laughs> and there's finding out that all this lot are hot, acting all hard and macho, just pretty much like most, they're still, there's still that, the family value of mums and grandmas and grandma and granddads where they're like, you will do as you told. And they back off and all the macho thing goes out of it. But like I said, you took a hell of a big risk there because we came in here locked and loaded because you automatically assumed we were one of these vigilante groups who were going to come in and just take what we want. And because you took our guy, that's how you appeared to us would reached an impasse because you weren't prepared to make a deal and thankfully she stepped in and it calmed it all down and the chihuahua thing was just brilliant i was expecting some like two big massive rock like this and it's three tiny little chihuahuas <laughs> for those of you that don't know i have a little chihuahua who looks almost identical that's why it's so hilarious to me <laughs> right so the weird thing about that guy digging those graves is he had and they're putting it down to sunstroke, but he's saying that he had some sort of weird kind of waking dream that's made him, he's remembered at the end now why he dug the four graves. Have we lost four? I know we lost Ed, we lost her sister. I don't know who else we lost. I guess we'll find out in the next episode because it's kind of ended right there. Whew. This is a roller coaster, roller coaster of a show. It, it, you're up one minute, down the next. You don't know who's going to make it. You, you, it's not like old school shows where you know none of your main cast is ever going to get killed off. Anyone's fair game in this. And we still don't know the whereabouts of Mel. Is Ian heading back here? Because if he's heading back here, he should have got back here first. He's the one who took the van. I don't know. And I don't know how long those guys are going to last that they met there, that they've left some guns with, whether we'll see them again or not. I don't know. I don't see them needing to ever head back into Atlanta again. 
Um, and he's now got that radio to be able to inform the other guy and his son not to head there unless he's already done so. No clue. No idea. Right. We'll be back with episode five um, next week. Until then, guys, thanks very much for watching. If you do want to watch the full-length episode, you can. Just check the links in the description as always. And I would appreciate a quick thumbs up on the video if you enjoyed it. By all means, post your comments down below. Try to keep the spoilers to a minimum. I know it's a very, very big show and I'm going to have to possibly start moderating some of the comments if, if it gets a little bit out of hand. Um, but I would appreciate a quick subscribe. All that usual subscribing stuff down here. Um, and I will see you for episode five next. Take care.